my concern has always been more of the same and what you've said, excess and more and more of Ryan Reynolds dragging these jokes on, like you said, a spectacle. Yeah, it's, Barnum and, it's Barnum and Bailey's yes. circus. The circus. Ding, ding, ding. What up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Deadpool 3 to save the MCU. Per Matthew Vaughn. That's the text that you sent me, Brian. I still don't know how this is all, how this is going to transpire. But about saving the MCU, Brian, that is a bit of a reach. Is how I uh, received this this thought of Deadpool saving the MCU. Well, all I had to say, we'll see, Brian, because I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What were your thoughts when you saw this, and what and what was said? Well, I think it's a problem when your universe is in a stage where at every turn and every successive project, this becomes the conversation, <clears throat> right? Is this the project that turns things around? Is this the project that saves the MCU? Is this the project that makes people <clears throat> jump, you know, both feet back into superhero storytelling? I kind of feel like it. this movie is, it's not really what this movie is designed for. I don't really think it matters. Um, so Matthew Vaughn is out promoting Argyle and obviously directed X-Men First Class and you know has, is never shy about speaking his mind. And that's great. And he kind of said on a podcast, um, he was talking about what he knows. And so here's the quote from Deadline's story. The few snippets I know about Deadpool versus Wolverine or Wolverine versus Deadpool, I'm sure that argument between Ryan and Hugh is happening as we speak, are unbelievable. That's going to be the jolt. The Marvel Universe is about to have a jolt of them, and it's going to bring that body back to life. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. I think that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are about to save the whole Marvel universe. End quote. Pass, I, I guess I fail to see the connection. Um, and I, the reason I say that is because I just fixate, I just circle and fixate on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 did fine. People were there for that. They yeah. were used to it. They were ready for that story to end. It was a very good film. And there was no signs of death in yeah. that but it's the other stuff that's been unsuccessful yeah. Deadpool has been a very successful franchise first two movies 750-ish global box for R rated that's very solid you add Hugh Jackman to that yeah I think you could be aiming above that I don't know if you quite get to a billion with the R rating but you know 800, 900 I think that's pretty much assured but yeah. what that but like the idea that like if that happens, that somehow Brave New World and Fantastic Four and these TV shows now have a new halo and a new lease on life, I don't see it. If, if those are not. at the same quality <clears throat> of Quantum Mania and Eternals, they're all going to bomb the same way. We're definitely going to be talking about Thunderbolts and, and, and Captain America and all these other things. But what, when I think about what he says... About the possible, about what Deadpool can do for the MCU. Certainly, it can provide a jolt, Brian. That is without question, it can provide a jolt, especially of money, because they've been burning cash doing this She Hulk that costs, are you kidding me, Brian? Over 200 something million dollars for She Hulk? Are you kidding me, Brian? Yeah, Tatiana Maslani basically said they're not being brought back because it was too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Although we don't know if that's true, but that was her comment. She's like, we got that budget. Yeah. So, and a, and, and a lot of their movies have been bombing. They haven't, Disney is not in a, Disney is not in a good place. So Deadpool is in a position certainly to provide that cash flow and that positive momentum that they need. But Brian, as you mentioned, there are things coming up the pipeline that are not going to uh, take the baton and sort of finish off like Usain Bolt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Your thoughts? Well, 
Yeah, I just think this is on its own track. And I think that Marvel is clearing the decks for it, right? This is the only Disney Marvel film for next year. But that's not totally by design. Let's be intellectually honest about that. The reason that's occurring is because of the strikes. They have delayed production. And I think it has put Marvel in maybe in a somewhat beneficial position by setting Deadpool as the only thing they're going to have on the board. This is a little different than DC, right? Which is clearing the decks for Superman Legacy. That was a more active decision to not have anything other than Joker Part 2 in 2024. So yeah, like I think Deadpool will be fine. I think Deadpool will make quite a bit of money. I think it's one of the safer <clears> bets <throat> of the year to be profitable. I think if I was to stretch Matthew Vaughn's comments into something like how could it actually, let's not say safe, how could it really help the broader MCU? We talked about the idea of a reset coming and uh, being necessary. Mm -hmm. The assumption has always been that Secret Wars would be that reset. But we've lost so much confidence in where Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars are headed that if Deadpool does some of that heavy lifting and basically allows more creative freedom to go back to square one with some of the characters, maybe that is something they could then parlay into better stories. But they still got to make better stories. <laughs> like this, yeah. this idea that like, oh, you know, we, I think what Matthew Vaughn's a little stuck in what I don't agree with is like, we, we are not ever going to be in 2018 again. We're not going to be in the time where you just put the superhero label on a project and made money. Like I, th that, that day is gone. And I don't think Deadpool 3 or any other movie is bringing that back. So that brings me to, to yes, we've established that. Money-wise, financially, Deadpool will provide that joke that the that the MCU perhaps or Disney needs, right? But story-wise, Brian, what are you expect? I have a th I have a word that keeps coming to my mind when I think about this movie, and it's not the word I really want because the movie I w the word I want to be using is great. The movie I want to be the word I want to be using is classic, epic. That's what I want to be throwing around. You know what the word I keep thinking is coming? Excess. That's what I think is coming. Excess. More Ryan Reynolds. More Hugh Jackman. More characters. So maybe it's either excess or more. You choose one of those two words. I think that's what we're going to get because it does feel like, whether it's Ryan Reynolds, whether it's Kevin Feige, whether it is Disney higher-ups pushing, there is pressure on this project to be huge yes and i think similar to our discussion of it's ironic marvel is very much in the right in the spider-man 4 discussion that smaller is better but i actually think marvel seems to be falling for the same mistake that sony's falling for in some of its own projects including this one because we're hearing about all of these possible cameos and all these alt-universe characters are showing up in this movie, which leads me to excess. And it may be a spectacle, and it may be a must-see opening weekend event, but excess to me doesn't equate to lasting sort of impact or lasting zeitgeist in, in the genre. With Deadpool, uh, I, I, I always think back to watch when I go every time Deadpool one is on I watch it if, if it's on and my kids aren't around I watch it and it's a great for me is one of the classic superhero films agreed uh, um, that's ever been made for that character and how he did that Second one was just more of the same for me. Yep. And that's t and that's a tough watch to finish to watch from beginning to end. I'd say. Yep. I agree. And my concern and my um, my concern has always been more of the same and what you've said, excess and more and more of Ryan Reynolds dragging these jokes on, like you said, a spectacle. Yeah, it's, an Barnum and, it's Barnum and Bailey's yes, circus. The circus. 
Ding, ding, ding. Damn, that remind me of uh, Apollo Creed. Ding, oh, okay. ding. Go ahead. Rest in peace. We'll, yes. Hopefully we'll talk about that later. Yes. But yeah, that's that's my sense. And I feel like it's, you know, some of it's self-inflicted. I do think some of it's pressure, you know, from the studio. It feels like it's from all directions that like some of it's Disney wanting to prove it can do an R-rated, you know, project, you know, of this nature. Like, I think that's actually a negative, right? It, it kind of leads to um, wanting to go overboard in some ways, maybe to demonstrate that. So, yeah, I just... As I said, I've never worried about this project's financial success, and I will not. I am yeah. supremely confident in it. I have worried in its, about its, its quality, about its ability to transcend and, and put a real mark and be a memorable film that we're talking about you know, five and ten years later. I, I just That I will be surprised if it happens. Let's see what... Uh, I mean, hopefully um, we can get more commentary from Matthew Vaughn after this movie comes out. But what um last thing we're going to be seeing Hugh Jackman for a minute. You thought he was around for 20 you thought 20 years was a celebration, 30 years, let's say that cuz he's going to be in this for a minute until we get to Secret Wars if that's the plan, right? Um, how do you feel about that? And what do you think Wolver what more can Wolverine his character bring to 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 Wolverine um more than what he's already done? Well, look, I mean part of, I think the opening weekend is gonna be massive for this. Uh I really do. I, I think Ryan Reynolds knows how to market. Yes. Hugh Jackman knows how to market. I think the trailers are gonna look good. Um that you got the hook of Wolverine wearing his comics accurate costume, right? That that's a hook. I mean, I think it's a little bit of a you know, hey, we're this is to your point. We're squeezing, we're squeezing that juice out of this character because we're like, what else do we got in the closet? And they've already teased that costume. Remember, he was on the plane. He opens it. He sees it. We we've been here before. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's yeah. part of the that's part of the hook. Um, I personally, you know, I personally don't need. Hugh Jackman to prove anything more to me about this character. I think he, you know, obviously from his debut in 1999, where he was he was outstanding. I think he really was on this quest to deliver sort of a memorable, differentiating performance as Logan, and I think he did it in Logan. I think he already did it. Now, granted, he didn't do it looking the classic Wolverine that most people would associate with, but. You know, I think a lot of pundits and a lot of fans would, would put Logan at least in, you know, maybe not first ballot Hall of Fame, but I think it would make the Hall of Fame for the genre. So I think he's already done it. This mm. definitely this definitely feels more like you're unretiring to come back and go after another title when they don't have anything left to prove. And and I got to be honest, like, I don't need him at the center of another multiversal story when he already did sort of Days of Futures Past and Time Track. He's already kind of done stuff like that. So... He's a big star, and Disney's going to ride big stars because they need that. But I, you're asking me personally, I don't need it. I'll say this, and we'll we'll sign off. I think this is just a bucket bucket list thing for him because he's mentioned before about wanting to be in on the same screen with Avengers and and do more, yeah. you know. And, and and now he's going to get his wish. He, 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 so, hopefully, Brian, I don't know if you're going to be watching the Super Bowl. Are you going to be watching it? Oh, of course. If you want, we can go on live and we I can do it. Put YouTube, we can share, we can watch it live. <laughs> um, I'll figure out how we can do that. But um, that trailer, Brian, I'm just... Ryan Reynolds knows what's at stake here. I think he's smart enough to understand what's at stake here. He has... I'm pretty sure he's been given the keys, Brian, to do whatever he wants, right? With the Fox characters and all these other ones from that side. I don't know. I don't know if we'll see any appearances from uh, MCU characters, Brian. Is has there been any mention of MCU characters? No, it's been more getting this. the band to get together on the Fox X verse, right? I mean, it's yes. like Cali Berry and Patrick Stewart, and okay, you know, and, I, and then I think the alt verse, right? The Channing Tatum, like the like the what if ah, of yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. It's yes. kind of more what we heard. Yes, uh, I think on the MCU side, who is, there's at least one character 
that's rumored to cross over and it's escaping me right now. There was rumors of at least one character that was known to be in, in the movie as maybe the bridge between, between the two. But look, I mean, Ryan Reynolds has proven to become pretty reliable when it comes to entertainment, like stuff yes. that he's touched, you know, free guy. Um, he, he generally is, you know, even stuff he didn't think was going to work yeah. has generally made money. Has it yeah. been classic though? Mm, that's mm, very mm, much mm, more debatable. Six yeah. underground, like these are things that have been big viewerships and worked for whoever the employer or the studio was. But I don't know. I still don't trust that this project will be groundbreaking or move the genre forward or do something along the lines of what Matthew Vaughn is implying. Yeah, yeah. yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what we'll be getting. With this Deadpool trailer, what do you guys think? What kind of story you think we're going to get for Deadpool? I know there's been a lot of theories. If you go out to New Rockstars, Emergency Awesome, I'm pretty sure they'll give you a bunch of theories and uh, of what could be happening and what they're setting up for. And obviously, that is Secret Wars, right? We're going to see how that all uh, plays out. Right. So and hopefully the buzz is crazy at the end. Right. Because if you want that buzz to go crazy for Secret Wars. Are you kidding me? If it's anything like Secret Invasion, we're in for a hell of a disappointment. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.